welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking to Sabrina Stocker and we're going to be talking about why you should be starting a business in 2021. Now, Sabrina herself is perfectly placed to be asking these questions to because she successfully started business after business and we're going to find out what, why, when, how with Sabrina herself. So, first of all, let's give her a chance for Sabrina to induce herself and then we're going to go straight into those heart hitting questions. Sabrina. <laughs> Afternoon. Um, hi everyone, I'm Sabrina. Um, goodness, 25, from London, loving life. Uh, run a few different businesses, started multiple over lockdown. Yeah, excited to jump into this. Yeah, we can't wait to actually. Now, the reason we brought you along here, the reason we thought you were gonna be the perfect person to talk to is because I know how many times you've sprinkled a bit of magic and be able to create a business out of absolutely nothing. Because most of the time, when it comes to starting a business, there's always these excuses, isn't there? There's always this, I've got to have X amount in my bank to be able to sell the business, or I need to have these sort of um, things in place before I start a business, or I need to get to a certain point in my career and then I'll start a business. But I know for a fact for you, it's always been a case where you've just seen some, something that you know you can turn into a business and been able to apply it and being able to then go and make it happen. Mm -hmm. What advice can you give to people? Why, why, you know, what is it that you do differently where you don't have that fear factor and you don't use those excuses to hold you back? What, what advice can you give to people? Yeah, really good question. Um, so in terms of, you know, how I grew up, both my parents were teachers. So yeah. They taught me to love to learn and I love learning different things. So I think the first part is being really open-minded. But then I've also listened to the likes of Tony Robbins, Brendan Bouchard since I was like 14 years old and ingrained in me is such strong belief systems that I'm able to either, you know, create what I can create within my power, or I'm able to go learn how to create that. So for me, I don't really get limiting beliefs. I don't get, you know, these thoughts in my head holding me back. And to answer the second point of that question, you know, I didn't have parents who had funded me. I didn't get out alone. I didn't do it off the VC. My first company actually was just running uh, in a profit share basis in my old um, parents company. And it was very lean. I actually started, when I first started out, using my old trophies and medals to give to the kids. Because obviously I was, you know, didn't realize you could buy them that easily. Um, and I just started the company because I just did it. And rather than having that, unless you're in tech where you might yeah. need that investment, um, there are so many different businesses now, especially that everyone's moving online, that you can do lean. That if you have a job and you still want to keep that financial security, you can get up early. You can go to bed late. You can try it out. Um, or you can just start making it happen and seeing where it goes. So I think the lack of excuses, uh, or the more excuses now, can't be excusable. Because there's so much free education on the internet, on YouTube, on online courses that you can purchase. Um, where you're able to accelerate your knowledge rather than letting that hold you back. Yeah, and I think what I really like about that, because it's safe to say now you've built an empire. Like you've got these different little businesses and look, look not everyone builds a, a successful business every single time. You know, you've made some great decisions, you've made some not so great decisions. They've all worked out in the end, but some of them have either accelerated or they've, you know, tripped tapped along. And I think that there is a real key point to me where you said it there about it's learning, isn't it? Like, You'll never create a business from scratch that is absolutely perfect the first day you do it. You're always going to mm -hmm. evolve it. You're always going to move it. Have you got any kind of tips on how you do that? Because you do that so well. Like every time we catch up and we talk about <laughs> it, you've made a change to one business or you've changed this business or you've done, you're constantly evolving. Like, mm -hmm. Where do you get that inspiration from? What, what's your tips on that one? I think inspiration wise and how I'm that ability is from playing tennis. Because when you walk on the tennis court, it's up to you, but you don't know what the weather's going to be like. You don't know how the referees are going to be. You don't know who you're playing. You've got to strategically change. You learn the skill of being able to adapt. And I also think on the flip side of that, if you're trying to grow a business, and this is more trying to grow that business, um, if you're not taking risks and if you're not making mistakes, it means your risks aren't big enough. Like we have only a certain amount of time to be successful. If you want to exponentially grow, then you have to take risks and sometimes they're going to work and sometimes they're not going to work and you know you've just got to keep moving but if you feel oh, better to work or I'm scared to make that decision you'll never go anywhere. I think the way that you've kind of built your businesses up again like none of them have failed but they've all gone at different speeds and different times and you've you know some of them have gone like overnight success where others have built up to where they are now and I think 
a lot of that is down to the fact that you know you see that little spark and you, you you're not afraid to go for it mm -hmm. so if someone was going to see a spark now and they were going to go what what would you say would be the first thing they should do is it is it get your socials up and running first is it get yourself a bank what, what what is it what if you saw a spark today you're walking down the street now on the way mm -hmm. home what's the first thing you're going to do to get that business off the ground so i mean it really depends on what kind of kind of business yeah. it is um, I'm going to say in this particular example, it could be a service-based business okay, and yeah. keep it lean yeah. um, just because I could give a million different, different answers to that. Yeah. In terms of what I would do, um, first of all, I would, most of the business ideas that I've come up with haven't been, oh, let's try and reinvent something or let's try and change something. It's because there's been a problem that I've personally gone through or somebody I know very well has gone through and I've thought of a solution. Yeah. So it's a problem solution. So number one, figuring out, is there an actual problem to solve? The second, is it a viable product? Is the amount of um, income that you're going to get out worth you building it up as a business? Is it scalable? Is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. Um, and then figuring out if it's something on the market already. If there's something on the market already, is there something that they're not doing that you could then go do and make it even better? Yeah. Or is it something that's completely saturated and potentially that's not where you want to go down? So they're the first kind of initial thoughts I think of. I like that. I like that a lot. And I think just, just on that scalability, and I think this is another one where I think if you talk and listen to different um, experts in the fields and different people trying to tell you, you're always going to get a polarizing um, opinion on scalability, like how crucial it is. But like, just give a bit of a background to your particular story, because what I love, I think, mostly about your story is, yes, your first business wasn't the most scalable business in the world, but look what it developed you into. Like, mm -hmm. Look at the skills you were able to take from that and then be able to bring it into more scalable businesses and go from there. So like, talk someone through that. Like, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer in myself that you know, do what you're good at. And for you, obviously, tennis is what you're amazing at. So you took that as like your starting point and build it on from there. So just give like some inspirations to how or, or why should someone should kind of start that, that little business, that almost like micro business if you like, yeah. although yours was far more than a micro <laughs> business at the end, but that start that micro business, just to cut your teeth on it. Like how important was, would you say that is? Yeah, I mean, my tennis company was, um, you know, I love the fact that I could learn very quickly, yeah. but my risk wasn't that big. Yeah. Because if you look at you know the deals that we were doing then, like deals, but however we you know, someone was paying us twenty, thirty pounds to enter a tournament. So the cost of that was very, very small. Yeah. Now when we're taking contracts fifty, a hundred k, you know, it's exactly the same game. It's just at a bigger scale. Yeah. That's the only difference. So looking back there, I learned very fast. I learned what works. I learned how to scale a team. Um, I mean, the scale of it, you know, we started off with one tennis tournament, five kids, Sunday afternoon, and a bubble in David Lloyd. It was, it, you know, and that scaled to about 400 events a year and over 40 members of staff. And prior to The Apprentice, we were the largest tennis tournament company in the UK. So what that taught me was how to actually run a business at the same time as having incredible support from my team, but also from the LTA, helping me go through that journey. While studying my master's, so I was learning the theory, but that's another conversation. Um, and being okay to take the risk, because the worst case scenario was I was gonna be 21 years old, and I would, you know, two years later, I'm still 23 years old, and the business didn't work. So I think it's really important to try a micro business, number one, to find out if you really should be running a business if that That's business should be for you yeah. the second is if you're looking to create a lifestyle business and compared to a scalable business so lifestyle business is when it's funding your ability to travel your ability to pay yourself a solopreneur in a sense yeah. or whether you're going to go into a scalable a bit of a monster when you're looking at kind of six seven figures i kind of really think the only way you're going to make big money is in tech so you kind of got to figure out where you want to go there's no right or wrong answer Everything has positives and negatives to, to how you're going to spend your life. But the biggest thing it taught me was, yes, business was for me. I was never, ever going to work with someone else. And I loved it. And you'll tell very, very quickly if you love it or not, because you'll spend every single hour of the day doing it too. Yeah, that's so inspiring. Because I think, again, and, and I hear it all the time. I hear this, I've got this great business idea, but, and I've got this great business idea, but, and, and there's all these different elements stopping you. And you're right, there are certain businesses out there where, you have to have certain things fall into place before you can get it off the ground. That's right. But 
for most people who want to at least try themselves in a business environment, I think it's really important to, to do that. And your story, that inspiration of, you know, you didn't have a, a big lump sum of money at the beginning to plow into it and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just developed it over time and you learned and you developed and you grew. And now I honestly believe it's that, that starting point, that, that, that way of just getting out there and doing it that meant that now you can adapt it to all these different businesses and these different empires that you've got growing. Um, and I think that, for me, is what really is an inspiring thing. And I think, you know, for people who are looking to try to go out there and want to become, you know, the next Sabrina, basically, or, or just someone who wants to have their own business. Never heard that before. Put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> but go on. But for anyone who wants to go out there and make a name for themselves, then I generally think that, like, a story like yours, where you've got that ability to, you know, just give it a go and to build it up is really important. So my next question, and this is more about, again, I think what you do really well is you're part of the new way of marketing. Like, forget me if I'm wrong, but you've never gone down the traditional, I'm going to pay X amount to be on, on Google, you know, the SEO route and trying to put up your brandings and trying to be like, and even that's not the traditional way, is it? That's kind of the, the old new, if you like. But you are really part of that brand awareness and making sure that you the brand Sabrina mm -hmm. is what is marketable for a lot of your businesses how would you kind of go about giving people tips on that because I think the scary thing or the thing that people don't believe or don't understand is it's not really about your Twitter followers or Instagram followers is it it's about you just at least putting that brand there. even if you've got 10 50 100 followers that mm -hmm. could be enough for your community content mm -hmm. but what do you do to keep them engaged what other, what could others do yeah, for sure. I mean, I think a lot of it came from when, you know, just going through the journey a little bit. When I was a tennis coach, yeah. people bought into me yeah. because they wanted to make sure that I would look after their kids yeah. um, and obviously, you know, have a good day on tennis. They wanted to make sure that their technique was going to improve. They brought me into me as a person and that really accelerated the thought of, okay, people are buying into people. We yeah. hear this all the time, but no one ever does it. So to fast forward to what we do now, you know, the way we're able to expand very quickly is because what we do is actually not only preaching what we do, putting my face, for example, to the companies, yeah. but then we also now do, you know, create the synergies between personal brands and brands. As we've all moved online, especially after the last two years, your face is the most important thing because you're ultimately speaking to someone over Zoom, you're not able to probably see them as much as anymore, or you're doing online marketing. So they have to be able to trust you. And the only way they can trust you is by putting trustable things about you so you get that credibility that authority that visibility online so that they want to work with you the only reason why someone won't want to work with you is because they'll have that internal thought saying this won't work for me um, and it's about being able to create that rapport at the same time as knowing what you're talking about because you have to be able to you know produce those results otherwise no one's going to take you seriously yeah. so it's kind of getting a balance of those two oh, I love that I love that and I think like moving on from that and like you've taken those learning and everything you've just said there and also kind of going back to what you're talking about learning as you go along and also finding that that issue and then finding a solution for mm -hmm. it that's exactly what your new enterprise is all about mm -hmm. is it? too common for you. did you want to talk to everyone about why that's so important like I, I i see it like when you told me about your new idea the first thing i thought was ah oh, because you've already got that problem you've already had that experience that problem so Here's a solution for it. So you want because I think it's a clever way of kind of, and, and it's new, isn't it? It's, it's mm -hmm. not been done before. So talk to people. Like, what is it that that is different about it, and why is it so important? Yeah, really, really good question. Um, I love my company, Two Come Here. Um, in terms of what specifically we do, is we are in a sense an international PR agency. Yeah. So we get people featured out in the media, in the TV, in the press, etc. Why it works in a sense that when I used to pay a PR agent. You know, let's say I paid her a thousand pounds. My PR agent would spend her time and her contacts in order to get an end result. And one, you know, one month I could be on a stadium, the second month I could be in a blog post, the third month I could have nothing. There's no, you know, there's no strategy. In yeah. studying economics, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I want to know that if I'm paying somebody for a service, that I know exactly what I'm going to get out of. Um, 
And because it was so, it just didn't make sense as an industry. I just didn't get it. It meant, okay, there's probably other people who don't get it too. And what we've basically done with this new model is we've reversed engineered the whole process in the sense that we still do earned and, you know, PR so that we're getting people into and we're still pitching. Yeah. But by reverse engineering it, you're able to find out exactly what, you know, the editors, the contributors, the producers are looking for, find out what that checklist is. And therefore, be able to say to our clients, this is what we need to do. This is the pre-requirements. This is how long it's going to take. This is how much it's going to take. And this is going to be the end result. Yeah. So by doing this, I mean, it's not guaranteed. But using this process, we have incredible results for our clients because of that. Um, and also using the strategy, we can create virality. So typically, you know, what's the point of being in all of this press if no one ever sees it? Um, you can be in the biggest publications, but if no one knows about it, then you haven't got that visibility online. And we've been able to get articles to continuously go viral, yeah. 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. Shopping Slot had probably about 10 million people viewing those articles. Um, so you actually get the visibility as well. And by doing that, it just explodes um, personal brands and brands online. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I love the fact that, again, you saw that opportunity you saw that little spark and then you sprinkled your Sabrina magic and look where we are now. <laughs> and there we have it. So we've now gone through and learned all about why you should be thinking about getting yourself into business in 2021. 2021 is the year to be starting business and hopefully you can see what you can get out of it if you go for it. Now, big thanks to Sabrina. We've got some more content and we're gonna be making sure that we pick her brains a little bit more. So do keep an eye on the content. I'm gonna give a chance for Sabrina to say goodbye now. Hi guys, thank you. And also watch this content because I made, and one of my biggest mistakes was not keeping on top of my finances and accountants and cash flows and P&Ls when I first started off. And I wish all of this content was online when I first started my business. Now, you know, I was young, I was 20, I was spending way too much money um, on staffing and, you know, and loads of different random things. So staying on top of your accounts, is the most under talked about part of business because it is the most important part of business so um you know i, I would really say that if you are looking to start a business please watch these videos please proactively reach out and get on top of your numbers because the biggest thing that i've learned over time is being on top of your numbers is absolute key because if you haven't got those in place if you don't know how much you're making and how much you're spending you haven't got a sustainable business I couldn't say it any better <laughs> myself. Okay, so with that then, comment below if you've got any questions you'd want to pass over to Brina. I'm sure we'll get them over to her. So let us know below any comments you've got as well. Remember to like, subscribe, all that jazz. As Sabrina just said, we've got plenty more content coming, including content on, on Sabrina herself. So with that in mind, I will say goodbye now. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.